but I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his hand. A long time ago, I gave God my life, and I asked Him to lead the way. Though the road has been rough, and the going gets mighty tough, still I
everything you see from A to Z. A, I'm the architecture. B, I'm the builder. C, I'm the creator. D, I'm the developer. E, I'm the engineer. F, I'm the finisher. G, I'm the god of it all. H, I'm the head of it all. I, I'm the intelligent of it all. J, I'm the justifier of it all. K, I'm the king of it all. L, I'm the lord of it all. M, I'm the maker of it all. N, I'm the nurse of it all. O, I'm the origin of it all. P, I'm the providence of it all. R, I'm the reason for it all. S, I'm the supremacy of it all. T, I'm the time of it all. U, I'm the ultimate of it all. V, I'm the vast of it all. W, I'm the way of it all. X, I'm the multiplier of it all. Y, I'm the yesterday of it all. Z, I'm the zone of it all. want us uh, round here preaching the gospel but he wants to put a confirmation uh, upon his word he wants to prove uh, his gospel with signs and wonders uh, with healings and deliverance uh, with casting out of devils uh, out of these people we need some power so that when the people uh, have their problem they can bring it to Jesus about those boys what they do you can change my name but you can't change my life call me what you want to but I know who I am I know what I represent call me what you Shadrach me but I am a child of God I've got my mind made up I got a purpose and I will stay with God call me a holy rolling call me stupid call me still but I'm a child of God my mind is made up and be baptized what does baptism do? It gives me a relationship in his death, burial, and resurrection. I can't get it till I go down with him. I don't talk and I got to go. I got to be buried with him by baptism. Come up like he come up. Receive the Holy Ghost and then walk in the newness of life. That's resurrection power what God has promised and told you he's told you I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you I'll always be there in the time of your need stretch your hands to me cry out to me and see won't I be there no need of you throwing your hands up talking about you can't go no farther when you stood all you can stand just stand there they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength you shall mount up with wings of an eagle you shall fly and not be willing 
We cannot, uh, hallelujah, let our love be drawn away from him. We've got to remain faithful. We've got to remain committed. We refuse to let anybody pull us away from our long sorted Savior who is soon to crack the cloud. He's going to hear a cry. Come, my people. The marriage supper of the Lamb is come. All right. Keep on hollering. Now watch. I ain't going to take it. I'm going to help him. To bear it, he still got it. I know when he's become exhausted. Now when his strength is renewed. You got it again, bro. You got it. He don't take it. He helps you to bear it. When he come at you, don't give no ground. Then bless God, there's a name he can't stand. Can't stand that name. Can't stand it. When he come at you, say it in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you. I don't need no sticks, no guns, and no knives. I got power. Power is in the name of Jesus Christ. Hang his head. No praise for God. But all of a sudden, he had to talk to himself. He said, oh, soul, why aren't you so disquieted? Get up from here and hope in God. God has made you to know he'll never leave you. He will get up from here and stop Praise God and give God some glory. Think about the goodness of God. This is a wonderful night. We're able to do a little something to say to the Honorable Suffering Bishop Stearns and Lady Stearns that myself and my wife, all the members of this conference, deeply love you and appreciate you and the great congregation of Logan Park Apostolic Church. I want to say thanks with all of my heart for what you've done to assist me, this council, in kingdom building. When I met you, you had on a pair of hip boots, big tall rubber boots, mud halfway up the boots. I was asking somebody, where's the pastor? building and you were building uh, Logan Park then. And I appreciate the sacrifice that you made for God's work. You kept working on United States Steel, building bridge steel until you retired. You never stopped preaching, building, teaching, encouraging God's flock. Therefore, as the Chancellor of the International Association of Apostolic Apologists, at this time, I am going to confer upon Bishop George L. Stearns, the Honorary Doctor of Divinity degree in Apostolic Faith Theology and Christian Service, this 27th day of October, the year of our Lord, 2019. And we 
dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but a yesterday when it is past. And as watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, and in the evening it is cut down. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Who knoweth the power of thy anger? Even according to thy wrath. So is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long? Let her repent thee concerning thy servant. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy works appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto the children of men. And let the beauty of the Lord our God 
be upon us and establish thou the works of our hands. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I would say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress he is my God, in him will, will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth should be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him I will honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in 
green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with, with oil. And my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty, beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. So again, Lord, Teach us to number our days that our heart may be applied to wisdom. You may be seated. I turn you into the hands of the MC of the hour, Elder Hollis. Our desire this morning is to honor the legacy of our bishop. Our desire also is through our pastor that he would be eulogized. And our desire is that this family would be comforted as well as all of us who have been impacted by the life, the ministry of Bishop George Lee Stearns. Amen. I'm asking you to join me in the congregational song we will be following the program as it has been printed. Please join us in some day. I'm going where Jesus is. Anybody looking forward to that day called the rapture will be caught up to meet him in the air. Someday, someday, I'm going where Jesus is. Oh, someday. Someday I'm going where Jesus is. Oh, someday, someday 
I'm going where Jesus is I'll be caught up to meet him in the air Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him in the air Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him I need to hear the church Oh, someday Someday I'm going where Jesus is Oh, someday Someday I'm going where Jesus is Oh, someday Someday I'm going where Jesus is I'll be caught up to meet him in the air Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him in the air Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him So glad to greet him Caught up Come on, sanctified church I need to hear you Someday Someday I'm going where Jesus is Oh, someday Someday Going where Jesus is Oh, someday Someday I'm going where Jesus is I'll be caught up to meet him in the end Oh, I'll be caught up to meet him Caught up to meet him Joy and happiness will be mine peace and joy forevermore i'll be caught up to meet him one more time saints oh i'll be caught up to meet him caught up to meet him caught up to meet him in the air oh i'll be caught up to meet him caught up to meet him Caught up to be him in the air. What a glorious day that's going to be. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Dick and Sean Williams will come with the invocation. After him we will follow Pastor Rachel Augusto of the Good Shepherd Church in Hammond, Indiana. Old Testament and New Testament in that order. Let us look unto the Lord. Gracious Father in heaven, O oh God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you once again for your goodness, your mercy, yes. and your grace, O oh Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness that you have showed unto us, O oh God, through this servant of yours, O oh God, that you have called now to rest, Lord. For we believe that he fought a good fight and he kept the faith, O oh God. And Lord, we thank you for how he encouraged all that heard his voice, how to live a holy and sanctified life. We thank you for the preached word. We thank you for the taught word. We thank you for a life that he lived before your people. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God, for Lord, one that was after your own heart. We thank you for how he showed us what it took to be saved, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this family, O oh Lord, for Mother Stern, O oh God. We thank you for her, Lord. O oh Lord, their labor of love, O oh Lord, that you have not forgotten. Lord, we thank you for this family, O oh God. We ask that you comfort them, comfort their hearts, O oh God, in only the way that you can do. Nobody else could do it, O oh Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. Heal the hurt, even the church family, O oh God. Lord, he impacted all of our lives, O oh Lord. And we are here today, O oh God, for the example, O oh Lord, for how he lived and how he encouraged us to live. 
before you, O oh Lord. Lord, touch us right now. Although our hearts may be heavy, you are the mender of the broken heart. You are the lifter of the bowed down head, Lord. But Lord, most of all, Lord Jesus, let us hide your word in our heart that we don't sin against you, O oh Lord. Lord, the words that he taught us, Lord, let us not forget them, O oh Lord. But Lord, let us find ourselves doing it that we may be pleasing in your sight. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate this family. We appreciate this servant that you lent unto us, oh God. We thank you. Lord, you have spoken, and we say amen. Praise the Lord. Old Testament, Job 14, 14 and 15. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou would have a desire to the work of thine hands. New Testament, Revelations 14 and 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. May the Lord comfort the grieving hearts. One of the things we were taught here at Logan Park Assembly is the power of music ministry. Bishop would tell us many times that the ministry of song was like John the Baptist, that it prepares the heart for the word of God to come. I want you to receive music ministry at this time from the Bishop's Choir and from Sister Daisy Lavelle. I'm still holding on.
a long time ago I gave God my life and I asked him to lead the way though the road has been rough and the going gets mighty tough still I ain't going nowhere I'm right here to stay and though But I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to. imagine the family has received a multiplicity of uh, responses uh, to the transition of our bishop. Sister Adrian Chumley is coming. She's coming at this time uh, to read just a chosen few of the condolences. I do want to remind everyone that this is a Saturday morning service. Being that, we are on a time schedule to make sure that we get to the cemetery at a decent hour. Amen? Amen? So please, if you feel that you were overlooked, please charge it to our heads and not our hearts. Our desire is just to make sure that our bishop receives proper services, not only here, but also his military rights at the cemetery. Um, that being said, we have to move according to the program. I, we thank you and God bless you. We greatly appreciate that. Sister Chumley is coming at this time. God bless you. Condolences. Minister Carlton Amos, President of the Indiana State Young People's Union, New Bethel Tabernacle, South Bend, Bishop Cecil E. and Lady Tamora Golder, Jr. Emmanuel Apostolic Holiness Church, Raleigh, North Carolina, Barrington A. Smith, pastor. Christ Church Apostolic, James E. Tyson, the second lead pastor. Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, Gary, Reverend Isaac Culver, Jr., pastor. Calvary Tabernacle, Gary in Griffith, Indiana, pastor Craig Harper, first lady Latanya Harper, 
Roosevelt High School class of 1978. Mount Hermon Apostolic Faith Church, Gary, Bishop Thoreau Barnes, Sr., founder, Elder Ricky Dean, pastor. New Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, Gary, Dr. Chester L. Jones, pastor, Region 2 of the Apostolic Bible Students Association of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Suffolk and Bishop Don Reynolds, Council Chairman, Regional Overseer, and the pastors of Region 2, Bible Way Apostolic Church, God's Temple of Prayer, Gil Gary, Indiana, Elder Robert Nichols, pastor, and Lady Teresa Nichols, Emmanuel Healing Temple, Chicago, Bright Star Church, Chicago, St. James Ministries of God in Christ, Superintendent Chris Harris, Sr., pastor, Zion Tabernacle Apostolic Faith Church, Indianapolis, Bishop Thomas E. and elect Lady, Dr. Joyce L. Griffin, New Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, Gary, Reverend Morris F. Thompson, senior pastor and teacher. The Grace Apostolic Church family, Indianapolis, Indiana. Bishop Kevin M. Harrison, senior and First Lady Deborah D. Harrison. Rock Church, Indianapolis, Dr. Leonard S. Scott and First Lady Christine Scott. Greater Faith Tabernacle, Indianapolis, Suffolk and Bishop Daryl Feria, the Gospel Truth Apostolic Ministry Evangelist Valerie D. Clark, co-founder and pastor, Gary. King's Temple Apostolic Church, Marion, Ohio, Tyron A. Kaiser, senior pastor, Zion Temple Apostolic Church, Gary. Bishop Don L. and Lady Reynolds. Lighthouse Apostolic Faith Church, Chicago, Elder Levi Adams, senior pastor. Condolences. Logan Park Assembly of Christ, Inc. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. That which was written was upright, even words of truth. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 9 through 10. Elder and Sister Jeffrey Allen, officers, all auxiliaries, and members of the Logan Park Assembly of Christ Church, extend our deepest sympathy and prayers to Lady Mers the Stearns, the Stearns, Eller, and Price families in the passing of the Honorable Bishop George L. Stearns. We also extend our condolences to the entire bereaved family and friends. Our spiritual father in the gospel, Bishop Stearns, has gone on to be with the Lord. God graced him with a long and fulfilling life. He was loved, admired, and will be remembered as a man with a vision, conviction, and faith. He upheld the apostolic doctrine and the traditions that were handed to him, and he passed the mantle forward to Pastor Allen. Bishop preached the word in season, out of season, and was certain holiness is right. The Logan Park family was blessed to have such a great leader who loved the Lord and the people of God near and far. He gave of his time, talent, and gifts, both spiritually and naturally. Many of us have been encouraged by the Bible class series that helped prepare us for the test and trials of life. Just to name a few, our faith must be tried, validated faith, and I believe God, God believe I. He encouraged us to get closer to God, reminding us that a supreme test is coming. Little did we realize on March 18th, 2020, we were going to be shut down for almost two years. This was the last Bible class held. Prior to the COVID-19 shutdown, the Lord led Bishop to hold a prayer line. He prayed for each precious soul, asking God for divine protection. We enjoyed hearing Bishop sing various songs. Grace, he knows just how much we can bear. And if I can help somebody, then my living shall not be in vain. 
To the beautiful lady Myrta Stearns and your loving daughter and granddaughters, Linda, Joy, and Keisha. Thank you. From the Logan Park Church family for sharing your husband, father, and granddad with us for close to 60 years. May your faith in the promise of the resurrection be your peace. What a blessing it is to know that Bishop was instrumental in changing the lives of many souls for the better and for eternity. His legacy lives on. I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. With deepest sympathy, Elder Jeffrey E. Allen Pastor, humbly submitted by Sister Deborah A. Kimbrew, Church Clerk. Greater Morning Star Apostolic Ministries, Bishop Charles E. Johnson, Pastor, District Elder Fletcher Davis, Assistant Pastor, One Lord, One Faith, and One Baptism. Sincere greetings to Lady Murda Stearns, the Stearns family, and the Logan Park Church family. When I wake up in glory to Jesus sing redemption story, I shall see his blessed face who has kept me by his grace when I wake up in glory by and by. Bishop Charles and First Lady Sheila Johnson, District Elder Fletcher Davis, the officials and members of the Greater Morning Star Apostolic Ministries join together in expressing our deepest sympathy in the passing of your dear husband, father, pastor emeritus, and loved one, the Honorable Bishop George Lee Stearns. Heaven celebrates a mighty warrior. Psalms 116 verse 15 declares, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Indeed, a precious soul has gone home to be with the Lord. We admonish you to cherish Bishop's memories, honor his legacy, and live to meet him one day in the rapture. We are certain that the power of the love you, your family, and your church family share with each other, and for Bishop Stearns, will see you through this time of transition. May that love honor his memory, and may you cherish the time you share together, praying earnestly for you. Bishop Charles E. Johnson, Sr., Pastor. Resolution. In loving memory of Bishop George Lee Stearns, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of, mem of mercies and the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. Bishop and Mrs. Lambert W. Gates and the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International join the Stearns fam family and the Logan Park Assembly of Christ family in mourning the loss of Bishop George Lee Stearns, Emeritus of Logan Park Assembly of Christ in Gary, Indiana. Upon this solemn occasion, we deem it fit and proper to express our sentiments in resolving that Bishop Stern's family shall remain in our prayers today and in the time ahead, and that as Bishop Stern's loving husband of Lady Murder Stern's rest in the arms of Jesus, he shall remain in the thoughts and hearts of those who knew and loved him until we are all alive and remain and see him again on that great day when he shall crown all, Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, presented to the family of Bishop George L. Stearns on this 11th day of March, 2023. Apostolic Bible Students Association, Inc. To Lady Murda Stearns and the entire family of Bishop George L. Stearns, HDD Emeritus, and the Logan Park Assembly of Christ Church. We, the officers and members of the Apostolic Bible Students Association of Indiana, were deeply touched by the news of the passing of Bishop George L. Stearns, whose life and ministry has impacted many. We thank God for his life and bow in humble submission to God's will in calling our beloved bishop brother 
and friend from labor to reward. He is in the presence of a just God, and we commend you to him today and in the days to come. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. St. John 14, verse 27. Humbly submitted, Bishop Charles A. Sims, diocesan. The family wishes to take this time to thank each and every one for their expressions of sympathy, love, kindness, and condolences. Please be it made known that acknowledgments will be made at a later time, and the family asks that you please keep them in your sincere prayers. Amen. Words do matter. Some people said years ago, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They lied. (laughs) Words matter and words can hurt. We're thankful for all of your kind words. Thank you for your heartfelt words. Trust me, it does matter. We appreciate those words and thank you for taking the time all the staff, all the clerk's offices, all of those that submitted, those who took time to think before they typed, uh, we thank you because words do matter. I want to take a moment and I want to acknowledge a woman who has not been in this sanctuary since 2009, but she looks amazing today. Lady Murder Stearns, we salute you in the name of the Lord. And we're thankful to God for you being here this this morning. As they would say, she's dressed to the nines. Those of us that remember growing up with the influence of Lady Stearns, um, she was a stickler for diction. She was a stickler for enunciation, and she was a stickler for correct pronunciation. Sister Stearns, don't judge me today, please. (laughs) I believe the hat she is wearing is called... Queen's hat? Is it? Her hat is actually called I Am the Queen hat. How apropos. In most of the pictures that I've ever taken with Lady Stern, she has always had on her crown. The Queen wears her crown. I thought she was just simply a hat lover, but it was a twofold purpose. She also did not like the fact that the air-conditioned ducts would hit her in the top of her head. So today, we salute the queen with her crown. It has come that portion of the service, again, that words will be spoken. Words will be spoken for those that rest on the dais, And we're asking for two minutes apiece. We're asking. Now, brother musician, there's a song that says, done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. To all those that will be speaking in this session, all of you outrank me, so I cannot come up and ask you to be seated. But when you hear, done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. 
I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. So that nobody gets offended. Done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. We're asking you to come as you will be called. Um, our first speaker, Bishop Terry Martin, will come and he will give words of comfort within two minutes. He's done so much for me. Praise the Lord, family. We do give honor to Bishop George L. Stearns in his memory. Amen. The Logan Park family and mainly to his beautiful bride of 77 years and how he passed at this house for 55 years. We thank God for him. I do come representing Redeemed Fellowship, um, where I sit on the board of bishops there. And we do come and I represent them in extending our love to this house. I've come up through many years with the saints of Logan Park, amen. The young people department met each other, known each other, um, worked with some of them for many years. And I thank and praise God for holiness being taught in this house. We thank and praise God for this great memory. We just want to extend our love, me and my wife, Pastor Chastney Martin, and let you know we love you. We are definitely praying for you. And we do honor Pastor Jeffrey Allen. We thank God that, you know, many times when leaders leave, they don't leave a secession plan. Um, and it hurts the church. We thank and praise God that God gave Bishop Stearns the insight and the unselfish love to leave a leader here to carry on the work of God. Please give him a clap for that. Does that mean he loved you more than he loved being the pastor of this house? To his daughters, granddaughters, great-granddaughters, God bless you in Jesus' name. Next, we will have Bishop Wallace Johnson from Emmanuel Temple in Hammond, Indiana. Everyone, we're certainly thanking God for His goodness, His grace to all of our uh, the clergy, and certainly most of all to this uh, family. Uh, we certainly share with you in your grief. Uh, words are never really adequate, uh, no matter what we say. But uh, we did love Elder uh, Bishop Stearns. Uh, I was thinking about that word legacy. And the uh, words, if I could use this particular preacher's words, he said, it's not how long you live, but it's how well you live. And I certainly believe that Bishop Stern was blessed to live long, and he lived well. It's a blessing to make 99 years old. Amen. It's such a, it's such a blessing. And, uh, but we thank God for him and for his work, his labor, uh, we do bring you greetings also from the state of Indiana, Bishop J.E. Moore, Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith. God bless you. Amen. While Bishop Wallace Johnson was speaking, we couldn't help but remember District Elder Telefarrell, um, who pastored two churches. Emmanuel Apostolic, as well as Church of the Holy Ghost in Joliet, Illinois. Bishop Johnson is standing on his shoulders, and Bishop Telefero was truly a friend of this church and a friend of Bishop Stearns. Amen? Amen. The next speaker we will hear is Suffering Bishop Doncero Reynolds, who is the pastor of Zion Temple Apostolic Church, uh, 1525 Jefferson Street. Uh, and we're thankful to God that he is the nephew of the founder of that church, Bishop O.C. Garman. And he stands on his shoulders, still proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bishop Reynolds, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Truly give honor to God and honor the pulpit and all the bishops and pastors and district elders. And to the great, great family, amen, the Stearns family, we stand together with you in prayer. Amen. We're praying for you at this great loss. Amen. We are, as you, as has been noticed and has been acknowledged, amen, uh, I'm reminded of the um, legacy that, uh, that has been established. I came to know Bishop uh, Stearns uh, through the ministry of Bishop O.C. Garman and the fellowship that we've had down through the years with this great church. Amen. It's been a wonderful fellowship, wonderfully knowing, amen, a, man, a true man of God. He has had an impact on my life. I wasn't raised up here at Logan Park, but truly he has had an impact on me. Amen. And I thank God for his stand for holiness. Amen. His, his stand for the apostolic doctrine. Amen. His, his stand for integrity and fidelity. He was a man among men, and we shall be missed. We honor him and we adore. Amen. And we should remember all that uh, that Bishop has done for us. Pray, we pray for you, family. We love you. Logan Park, uh, Bishop Stearns left you in good hands. Amen. 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 And thank God for the pastor. Uh, I will say what, uh, uh, what the Apostle Paul says, I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Be strong in the Lord. God bless you. In 1972, Bishop Stearns, uh, by the grace of God, erected um, the edifice. Those of you that can look up, you will see a line in the wood right above my head that goes from one side of the wall all the way to the other. That's where the church ended at that time. Um, in 1988, it was extended further back, uh, back past a house we called Mother Tate's house and went into what is now the alley. In every phase, including when we built the 72 sanctuary, made an addition in 88 with a few classrooms and one sanctuary, and then, Deacon Sandage, help me out. What year did we do the Sunday school, Christian education? 97, 90, 97, um, in adding and making it full circle. So there was phase one, phase two, and phase three. In each phase, um, it was Bishop Morris Ellis Golder who served as the speaker and dedicated each one of these buildings. In our programs, you will see a picture of Bishop Golder preaching. Bishop Stearns, he used Bishop Stearns as an example. Bishop Stearns was on the floor. That's about the last time you ever seen Bishop on the floor. <laughs> and only Bishop Golder could get him there. I am about to bring to the podium his nephew, Bishop Donald Golder. And the relationship that this church has had with the Golder family is long lasting. I want to give God thanks for him. He is the pastor of uh, Praise Temple Apostolic Church there in Indianapolis, Indiana. And he's also the diocesan bishop of the state of Nevada, Bishop Golder at this time. Give honor to God today and to all the bishops and suffering bishops, district elders and pastors and to this great pastor, Pastor Allen, to this beautiful family, Stern family. Uh, Elder Hollis told the stories that I was gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> but Bishop Golder, Bishop Morris Golder, late Bishop Morris Golder loved him some Bishop George Stearns. Oh, yeah. And some Bishop George Stearns loved him some Bishop Morris Golder. Uh, on any given Sunday after we built the new sanctuary, Bishop Stern sent deacons to Grace Apostolic on a Sunday morning with a large check to present to Bishop Golder just out of nowhere. They had that kind of relationship. Bishop Stern was such a great man. I'm just here to pay honor and respect uh, to him. Uh, I preached in this pulpit at least three occasions and 
he cut me off after I started pastoring and said, pastors don't need to be away from their pulpits on Sunday morning. <laughs> but I have a story. One night we were at the council, ABSA at Zion Tabernacle, Indianapolis, Indiana. And Bishop Stearns was preaching up a storm about Gideon. He was talking about the numbers in his army. And then he said, how many numbers did he end up with? And he put the mic in my mouth while he was preaching. I said, 300. No, you're wrong. <laughs> See, that's who y'all be listening to. Well, I was the laughing stock of the night and embarrassed as I can be. But he came back before he finished the sermon and said, y'all, he was right. He was right. I said, thank you, Bishop. A big old sweat broke out in my face. And I said, Bishop, I thought that we was good, man. I thought we was. Why you embarrass your brother like that? But we certainly thank God for Bishop Stearns. He is a wonderful man. He was set in his ways, but he believed in apostolic holiness, separation, sanctification, living holy, living right. There ain't no question in my mind where he is. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And this is one of the most prestigious and progressive churches in the Pentecostal assemblies of the world. He didn't go around tooting his horn, trying to be nobody, didn't play no politics. He just wanted to be a mighty man of God, mighty man of valor, and he has definitely done that. Amen. I saw where he served in the military. Amen. But most of all, he served God. I believe Bishop Stearns had the tenacity of Isaiah, and he had, he had, he had the fire of Elijah and the fortitude of Jonah, and he had, he had the, the stamina of Nehemiah, and he had, he had the compassion of of Jeremiah and he had the wisdom of Solomon and the boldness, the boldness of Daniel. We talking about a man of God that had the epitome of serving God to the fullest and he loved this church and he loved the people of God all over the world. We're going to miss him and we salute him, not military, but we salute him for being a mighty man in the army of God. Let's give God a praise for Bishop John Stearns. We love you, Bishop. We're not saying goodbye, but we're saying see you later. After Bishop Oscar Sanders passed away, the Indiana State, otherwise known as the ABSA, the Apostolic Bible Students Association, uh, was then led by Bishop Charles Watkins. Bishop Charles Watkins went home to be with the Lord, um, but he loved and would come to this church very often. His daughter, who had planned to be here, but due to weather, uh, was not able to be here. Pastor Jan Watkins sends her love and sends her grace to this family. After the passing of Bishop Charles Watkins, it was Bishop James Edison Tyson who became the diocesan of the 4th Episcopal District. Today, uh, well actually yesterday, Bishop Sean Tyson, his son, sent his love and his greetings and his apologies to this family that he was not able to be here. But I'm grateful to God that the current diocesan, our bishop, of the 4th Episcopal District of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Bishop Charles Sims, who is also the brother of our sister, Marguerite Washington. He is here today and I'm grateful for Bishop Sims. Would you receive our bishop in Jesus' name, Bishop Sims? everybody oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is what Good. And how long does his mercy endure Forever. and everybody said amen. amen to this very fine first lady Stearns or should I say the queen the queen of this church let me correct that and also to the family of Bishop Stearns to your pre uh, pastor, Pastor Allen, and to all the ministers on the pulpit, we are grateful to God to be here for this occasion 
About three years ago, I had the privilege of helping uh, Bishop Stearns with the transition of the pastorate here. And I remember, I, I know Bishop Stearns pretty good, and I know he wants things done a certain way, so the litany that I drawn up, I told my bishop, I'm gonna let you see it. And then when we got ready to uh, do the transition piece, he said, Bishop Sims, you don't have to show it to me, you the diocesan. I was saying, yeah, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Can't tell it all. God bless you. We're thankful to the Lord for the fellowship that this church and the reach of this church, the tentacles of this church reach very far. Uh, the other day I was at the church office and the phone rang. I answered the phone and there was a gentleman who said, uh, I answered the phone and I said, this is Logan Park Assembly of Christ. This is Elder Hollis, how may I help you? He said, hello. He said, I need to speak with someone to get information. I said, I hope I can help you. He said, I heard that Bishop George Stearns had transitioned. I said, that information you received is accurate. He said, I work for the stewardship of Coca-Cola. He said, and currently, Coca-Cola has me working in Alaska. He said, but when I was in Illinois, I would come over to Indiana and sit in the Bible classes of Bishop George Stearns. He said he would acknowledge me and I would just wave. He said, would you please do me a favor? He said, tell the family that all the way from Alaska, we're, we're thinking about Bishop George Stearns. I want you to know that the impact of our bishop goes not only within this city, not only within this state, not only within this country, even this morning, uh, Pastor Karen Fife called from London, England, and she said, make sure you express to the family. She said, no, David, don't forget. Tell them that even England is in prayer for the family today. <laughs> impact of Bishop's ministry has caused us to intersect and to cross paths with so many. I'm thankful to God that another one is here who, have come, who has come for many years to share with us the word of God during our conventions. His name is Bishop Lawrence Copeland and he is here from Durham, North Carolina. I'm sure he's coming with some power. I want you to receive Bishop Copeland in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And then certainly we give honor to God, his precious son, Jesus Christ, to this clergy, to the current pastor, First Lady Stearns. I could see the elegance. Uh, first time I had a chance to lay eyes on her, but I could see the elegance in her life. And we thank the Lord for getting a chance, not for this occasion, to meet the family, the daughter, the granddaughters and the saints of God. And certainly as Bishop uh, uh, Elder uh, Hollis has uh, expressed, we intersected some years ago, and uh, his, his life and his ministry has really impacted me in a profound way. And it's just so important to have that type of um, uh, influence in, in today's world. I wrote down three words, and I ho hope uh, Sister Stearns, don't judge me for my English as well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But one of them was reverent. And when I thought of Bishop Stearns, I thought of reverent. Uh, early on, we were taught that that word should only 
be spoken concerning God. Psalms 111 and 9, it says, reverent and holy is his name. But I think it's applicable uh, to Bishop Stearns and others like him uh, that have an honorable life. In fact, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. It is said of the late Bishop uh, A1 Johnson that he was an anomaly. In other words, his life was an exception to the rule of leaving without smoke on your life. Praise the Lord. It means something to leave here without issues following you. Come on, come on. In order to have honor, you have to do honorable things. A prominent lawyer in the South was convicted of uh, murdering his wife and his son. He had an honorable position, but he wasn't doing that that was honorable. So when you're not honorable, honor goes away. I say it goes away. But I'm thanking God for Bishop Stearns. I believe honor applies to Bishop Stearns. The second word that came to my mind was relevant. The word means appropriate to the current time, period, or circumstance. It means appropriate to the current time, period, or circumstances. It also means of contemporary interest. Even though he was in his 90s, Bishop Stearns was still relevant. He still had something to say that would apply to our lives today. And so he would be considered to me relevant. And he didn't have to just stick with uh, Daniel in the lion's den and the three Hebrew boys. There were times when I would hear him speak and I said, I need a dictionary because he would pull words out that you would have to open the book to find. The last one would be relevant. I was trying to think of relevant, but that doesn't apply. Relevant, which means the act of revealing something. As old as he was, he had words that were still relevant and they were revealing of current things that we needed today. COVID, COVID did a job on churches. COVID did a job on individuals. It's still doing a job on some. People have been displaced because of this condition. And some of them haven't gotten back on track yet. But I thank God for this man. I was here last year. I called him. And he said, you know, two words to me that really uh, I'm thanking God for them. He said, there is the expression of faith. That's what you say. And then he said, there's the validation of faith. They're two different things. A lot of people talk. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. But it's not uh, actualized or validated until what you do. What we say is one thing. But what we do is altogether a different story. And so I thank the Lord for this man. I tell you, he's really impacted my life uh, for eternity as far as I'm concerned. And so be encouraged, Logan Park. You have a, a, a footprint that is left in the sand that cannot be erased or removed. May God bless you is our prayer. A few years ago, Brother Lee, what year was that that the choir went to Washington? 2018. 2018, after our bishop hadn't been traveling for many years, and after our buses had seemed to be put to retirement, there was one church that Bishop allowed the choir to go and to be a part and minister at. What a wonderful time our churches have fellowshiped 
I'm thankful, I believe it was Brother Frank Jefferson who brought him to our church the first time through the Brotherhood, I think it was. I think it was the Brotherhood Department that brought uh, for the first time uh, the pastor of the Greater Morning Star Church. At that time, he was on Dick Street in Washington, D.C. Well, since then, he has not only been the diocesan of the D.C. Delaware Maryland Council, but he now, the church has moved to an outstanding, beautiful edifice uh, there in Maryland, and also he is now the presiding bishop of the Apostolic Faith Churches International. Would you receive at this time one who our bishop loved, one who our church loves, and one who he loves us, Bishop Charles Johnson in Jesus' name. Praise him. Will somebody just shout, hallelujah? Hallelujah! I think that's in order. I'm going to give honor to the spirit of Christ, to all of the pulpit and clergy, and of course, uh, to Pastor Allen. Thank God for you. Amen. And, and this family. First, I'd like to say, when I, I'm going to miss Bishop. Yeah. And let me say that there was ever a man who qualified for the title of Bishop. Bishop Stern qualified yeah. for that title. No question about it. You qualify. No doubt about it. Because sometimes people have the title, but they don't have the qualifications to support. But he had the qualifications. Loved his wife, yes, he did. loved his family, yes. and Logan Park, he loved you. Yes. No yes. doubt about it. He loved his church. And I'm going to miss those private Bible classes downstairs while we were eating. And the conviction that he had concerning the doctrine, the apostolic doctrine, and a life of holiness. He believed in that. And, and so I just want to say that we are praying for you from the time that I heard my daughter called me. And she said, Dad, you all right? I said, I'm fine. She said, well, another one of your friends have passed. And she said, most of your friends are gone. And that's a fact. When I heard the Bishop Stern and Bishop Parche, they were tight, very close friends. And I came after Bishop Parche to preach at this church. And when we sat down, we hit it off right away. You know, and someone told me once, said, when I was younger, they said, you are a young man with an old head. <laughs> That's why most of my friends were older than I am. But I want the family to know we praying for you. We've been praying for you. And of course, if anything that Morningstar can do uh, to make this journey easier for you, you can count on us, because we love you, we love Logan Park, we love the church, and as has been said, our churches have, uh, choirs have uh, came, uh, one choir, our choir came here and sang, and your choir came to Washington, D.C., and that's not around the corner, <laughs> praise the Lord, 
and we, and we want to keep that fellowship. Amen. We're going to keep that fellowship going. The last, last thing I want to say is not about an organization. It's about the body of Christ. What we've lost is someone in the body, not just an organization. Bishop Stearns impacted not just one organization. He impacted the body of Christ. God bless you in Jesus. A few years ago, on October the 27th, our bishop was conferred with an honorary doctorate degree by Bishop Brown of the St. Louis, Missouri area and his wife, Pastor Tanya Brown. Bishop Brown, I don't think was able to be here, but Pastor Tanya Brown is here. We're gonna ask her to come. We're asking everybody to remember your two minutes. Um, we still have a few more people, but we're gonna ask, um, Pastor Brown to come, not only did she confer upon our pastor the honorary doctorate degree with her husband, but she has come year after year to minister. Amen. Many people sitting next, possibly sitting next to you, receive the Holy Ghost yeah. under her ministry at this church. Yeah. Pastor Tanya Brown with your two minutes. and why he had to remind me when, <laughs> remind everybody when I got up. To Lady Stern, Pastor Allen, to the family, uh, God bless you, just had to be here today. I just want to sum up my words in the spelling of his name. G is for grounded, well-balanced, sensible, admirable, unpretentious, and realistic. That's what grounded means. E is for excellent, outstanding, character, personality, outstanding preacher, pastor, who is above the norm. Always for organized, he was systematic, having his affairs in order so as to deal with them efficiently. Bishop Stearns was rare, he was not commonly found. He was great, G, of immense quality, above average. E, he's earnest, sincere in his convictions and in his, his lifestyle. L, his middle name, he's loving, showing great love as a father. He was devoted as a husband, father, and a pastor. E is for eager, wanting to do something very much, which is characterized by his spirit of expectancy and his interest in the things of God. E, again, is for enormous. He was bigger than life. S is for Stearns, which the surname came from the Old English, which means strict or severe. T is for talented, tough, and tender. He had a natural aptitude or skill for something. He showed gentleness, concern, and sympathy, and yet he was strong enough to withstand adverse conditions or rough handling. E is for example, Bishop Stearns set the bar in so many areas, and I haven't heard anybody yet say anything about the way he dressed. <laughs> the first time I came here to preach when I think Elder Hollis, who I met Bishop Stearns through, invited, uh, called me to come up because it was my turn to preach. And I didn't hear him because I was mesmerized by the socks that Bishop Stearns was wearing. <laughs> A is for anointed. He was smeared with oil. And R is for ready. He was fully prepared. S is for saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We know where he is. I love the back of the program where it says, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. God bless you, family. It's my honor to be able to be here today to support you. May God bless you, and I love this church. Amen. Pastor Brown walked away and she said, and I still had one minute left. <laughs> Pastor Brown, would it be possible that we could get that and have that framed to give to the family 
um, the definition of who Bishop George Lee Stearns really is. God bless you, thank you. Um, there was a gentleman that I found pictures from, from back in the 60s, who would come to this church faithfully, faithfully um, giving his support and giving his fellowship. I found pictures of him at Zion Temple back in the 60s. I found pictures of him at Logan Park back in the 60s. And all of my life, I've known him to come to Logan Park. Um, he would come with energy and force. Um, he would come lifting up his hands. And while he was praising God, he would jump off of stages and run around the church. And a few years ago, the Lord called him home from labor to rest. But that energy, what we learned in physics is that energy cannot be destroyed. Energy is just transferred. That same energy, force, and power that was in her father, we see it in her as well. I'm going to ask you to receive. Pastor Rachel Augusto, who is standing on the shoulders of her father, pastoring there, uh, the Good Shepherd Church in Hammond, Indiana. Would you receive her at this time? refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We want to extend our deepest heart heartfelt sympathy to Lady Stearns, to Linda, to Joy, and to Keisha, to the extended family and friends, to Pastor Allen, to Lady Allen, and to the entire Logan Park family. To each of you in your respected places, I just want to thank God for such a man Amen. as Bishop George Lee Stearns Emeritus. I thank God for him. My father loved him. Yeah. And as a little girl, I seen him through my father's eyes. I had a great love and respect for him and the family. And when we heard the news, our hearts were broken. Oh, yeah. And we thank God. I called Bishop in 2009 of June, my heart was troubled. There were some issues I had about my ministry. And I called him, but not knowing what God had in store for me. And he told me, he said, I'm going to mentor you through the Bible classes. And through those Bible classes, the first Bible class I came to, I could not wait for the next Bible class. Because what I got from him, what God had for me through the man of God. And I was determined to get everything that God had for me through the man of God. I appreciate God. This thing is a spiritual thing. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. I thank God for, I remember... Even the preliminaries, I didn't want to miss the preliminaries because he always had an answer to questions that I had. The, the Godhead, I remember him going from A to Z, just talking about the Godhead. I never heard anybody teach like he taught on the Godhead. I heard types and shadows. Over the years, I've heard many teach on types and shadows, but I never heard them teach like he taught. He broke it down to where somebody like me could understand. And I'm so grateful to the Lord for what I have gotten. I give thanks unto God. And I appreciate him. And I just want you to know, family, that we love you. And that we are praying for you. And yes, our hearts are heavy. But we give God great pay praise. And I remember him, every once in a while he would tell me, he said, daughter, Keep looking up here. Keep on looking up. And now I can say, family, we are now looking up. And we're looking up and we're waiting for, we're waiting, amen, for the coming of the Lord. So looking for that 
day when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. We're not going to prevent them that sleep. They're going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain are going to meet them in the air. So no, we don't say goodbye. But we'll see you later. God bless you, family of Jesus. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. We're thankful to God. I was looking in the audience and I start seeing so many faces. Pastor Henley, would you please stand? Pastor Henley is the pastor of Christ Temple Apostolic Church in Chicago, Illinois on Ashland Boulevard. The former pastor was Bishop D. Rayford Bell. He is now pastoring that church. God bless you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Suffragan Bishop Melvin Boyd, would you please stay? Yeah. Suffragan Bishop Boyd is from the Louisville, Kentucky area. If I'm not mistaken, I know he was, or you still are, the chairman of the council. Oh, he was, okay. He was the chairman of the Kentucky Tennessee Council. He pastors there um, right outside, right across the, um, is that the Mississippi? Uh, the, the Ohio River um, that separates Indiana from Louisville, Kentucky. Drove at least minimum four hours to be with us today. Bishop, we're grateful that you're here. God bless you in Jesus' name. Many of our, during our convention, many of our sister churches would join us year after year, and I'm grateful that they are here as well. Uh, Pastor Valerie Clark, would you please stand? Amen. We give God praise. Thank you for your consistency and your love and your friendship. Um, Pastor Griffith, Pastor Griffith, uh, who is now pastoring uh, Zion Tabernacle Church. Um, his former pastor was Bishop Joseph D. Ferris, which was a good friend of our pastor. Bishop, would you just please stand? We're grateful to have you today. Thank you for being here. Pastor Tyrone Kaiser. Pastor Kaiser is from Marion, is it Marion, Ohio? Marion, Ohio, drove in last night and is here with us tonight. We're thankful he was the former Young People's President in Michigan, for the state of Michigan. Uh, Pastor Charles Hines, um, who is a father to many of us, taught many of our ministers that are here now, served as the Ministerial Alliance President, the Minister's Guild President, served as one of the superintendents of Sunday School here in this church. Pastor Charles Hines, we're grateful that you're here, a son of this house. Now pastoring Jerusalem Temple. Uh, 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 Sister uh, Evangelist Sabrathia, uh, help me, I'm, the last name, I'm, I'm losing the last name. Sisters Evangelist Sabrathia Marshall, um, she told me, and, and, and many of you old, older saints would remember Sister Sabrathia. When I say older, I don't mean necessarily older in age, um, but long time Logan Park members. She was a member here. She now lives in Atlanta, Georgia, drove from Atlanta and driving back by herself tonight, tomorrow, uh, but she had to be here for Bishop Stearns' funeral. God bless you. <laughs> Pastor Smith from the west side of Gary, Indiana. Always came with a shout, always came with a praise, and he's here with us as we mourn the passing of our bishop. Dr. Sherman Paul, Dr. Sherman Paul pastors now on what is known as the southeast side of Gary, there in Glen Park East. We're thankful to God that he is now pastoring Mount Zion, Mount Zion Apostolic Church, which was founded by... Uh, 
Suffolk Bishop, uh, Bishop Elder Nordley Wheeler, uh, who was a member of this church. Matter of fact, it was um, Bishop Elder Nordley Wheeler who told Bishop Stearns when they were building this place. Bishop Stearns' original plan, according to what we were told, was just to have two aisles. It was District Elder Nordley Wheeler that told him during the construction, if you only build the two aisles the way they're laying the frame, you'll never be able to extend. You'll never be able to expand. It was District Elder Nordley Wheeler who encouraged the third row. All y'all on the south side need to thank District Elder Nordley Wheeler for that section. Dr. Sherman Paul is now pastoring that sh church and standing on those shoulders. God bless you and we thank you for being here. <laughs> Pastor Ed McNeil, we're grateful. He is now pastoring the church that Bishop Scotty Jackson used to pastor, Bethlehem Healing Temple. Uh, they were on 22nd and Broadway, now on 7th and Jefferson. Uh, a maestro extraordinaire. Yes. Uh, gifted hands, but not only does he play, but he also has a gospel message in his mouth. God bless you. Uh, Bishop uh, Muir, I'm sorry. Bishop Muir, if you would please stand. I'm losing the name of your church. Fresh Winds, I knew I knew that. Fresh Winds Church um, in Merrillville, Indiana, originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, under Bishop Lambert W. Gates. He is here, and we're so grateful to have him in our midst today. One who called, this gentleman would call Bishop Stearns, if not every day, every other day. And I'm thankful to God when I saw him come in. Bishop Derek Jefferson, we're glad to have you in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Elder Ricky Dean, who is, uh, was a member of Zion Temple Apostolic Church, went on to pastor Mount Hermon Church here on 21st Avenue. We're thankful to God. God has healed him of a stroke. He could not talk, he could not walk. But he's here today, and we give God praise. Thank you, sir. We want to take this moment to acknowledge, after we've acknowledged all of those who have come in to mourn with us, I want to take a moment to acknowledge those who have sat under the tutelage of Bishop George Stearns. Would all the Logan Park ministers please stand? We give God praise for them. Others are serving in different places. We're thankful. Evangelist Erling Nichols, Evangelist Marva Wheeler, our president, Evangelist Rowena Dickinson, Minister Frank Jefferson, and Elder Odom. We're thankful to God for each of you for ministering to us week after week, Sunday after Sunday, yielding yourselves to the grace and the power of God. God bless you all. There is a group that is difficult for you to see because it looks like they're hiding behind flowers. Um, but they have served close to our bishop and bishop held them close to him. I'm going to ask if every official in this church, would you please stand? Especially our senior deacons, would you please stand? All of our trustees, all of our deacons. We're thankful to God for your service, thankful to God for many times. Bishop, when we saw Bishop, we saw you. Amen. When Bishop traveled, you traveled with him. Uh, not only was it trailways to Jesus traveling as the bus committee, but it was his deacons. When Bishop went somewhere, they went deep. It was a deep posse. Uh, I called them the Stearns Mafia. Uh, they moved together, they moved seamless, they moved in harmony, and they moved with precision. Today and yesterday, you saw that same precision. I want to thank the Lord that many times when leaders go to sleep in Christ, 
It is the board who starts bickering and arguing and disbands. I want to thank God for a board that has stayed with the man of God to his last day. God bless you. God bless each of you. Many times we hear about Bishop Stearns and Lady Stearns. But they had one daughter. And as Bishop would tell it, he's a oneness man. He said, I serve one God. I got one wife. I got one daughter. I think they had one dog. <laughs> one dog. Um, but what you don't hear a lot about is those that support. We hear a lot about Linda, but we rarely hear about her husband, Keith. I'm grateful Uncle Keith is in the house today. think that the Stearns family is just full of women, but they're actually men married into this family. <laughs> Keisha ain't a single mom. Right. Keisha got a husband, y'all. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord for Brother Darzell Price. God bless you in the name of the Lord. marathons y'all he started talking to me and we started talking about going running and we said yeah I said yeah I'm gonna get with you we're gonna go running let's do some running and COVID hit I said thank you Jesus <laughs> I said oh man they say we shouldn't we shouldn't be close together we got to be distance uh, Pastor Derek House is also in the house, Pastor House from Bloomington, Indiana, Pastor in Lighthouse Apostolic, um, so that I don't miss anybody, any other pastors, any other pastors, would you please stay? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, help, thank you, I, I was gonna ask you, I couldn't see the mask. Elder Jeffrey Carter, pastoring in South Bend, Indiana. God bless you, Pastor Carter. We thank you for being here. And yes, sir. Anderson. Bruce Anderson. Pastor Bruce Anderson is in the house, and we're thankful to God for him. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Grace and peace. Yes, sir. Pastor McWilliams. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Pastor, give me your name one more time. Pastor Levi Adams. We want to know and we want to say thank you to all the pastors who could use the excuse, I've got to prepare for Sunday so I couldn't come Saturday. Thank you for taking out of your time. Pastor Vincent Gray, a son of this house, is in the back. The Bishop's Choir is coming to minister in song and when they finish ministry, the next voice that you will hear will be one who in 2019, along with Bishop Sims, was installed as pastor of this church through our pastor, Bishop Stearns. Bishop laid his hands upon him. Not only did he lay his hands on him, but after the ceremony, people were dispersing and about to walk off. Bishop took a mantle and threw it in the air and walked away. He threw it in the air and only one man reached up to catch it. It could have hit the ground, but while everybody else was dispersing, one guy caught it before it hit the ground. That gentleman is the pastor of our church today.
our pastor at that time, Bishop Stearns, was so concerned about the flock that he did not want to leave us without a shepherd. Amen. Bishop said something to me years ago. He said, David, he said, when God called Aaron and Moses up into the mountain and Eleazar, he said, God said, strip Aaron of his garments and put them on Eleazar. He said, but when God, when Moses took the garments off of Aaron, if God had smitten Aaron, there would have been a gap where there was no high priest. He said, but God waited until Elea Eleazar was fully dressed before the Lord took Aaron. I'm grateful that the Lord did the same thing to Logan Park. God didn't leave us shepherdless. The Lord allowed the shepherd to be fully dressed. I'm thankful to the Lord to serve as the MC today to the family, to Pastor Allen. Thank you for this privilege. Out of this congregation, over 56 ministers have come. Out of this congregation, eight pastors and assistant pastors have come. Out of this congregation, recording artists have come. Out of this congregation, the choir has recorded two, possibly three recordings. Out of this congregation, teachers, preachers. But Bishop prayed a prayer and he asked God. He said, Lord, I've had pastors from under my ministry. I've had teachers and preachers from under my ministry. I've had singers from under my ministry. But Lord, I would like a national evangelist from under my ministry. He told me, he said, Dave, I prayed that prayer and God raised you up. I'm glad to be an answer to a prayer.
we say amen to the will of the Lord. You may be seated. God is yet great and greatly to be praised. And in our sorrow we find no fault. He's yet a good God. And as it was said before, certain things when God says something, there is no going back asking will he change his mind. He tells Moses, Moses, don't you bring that back to me no more. You're not going over. He made Paul to know that, no, my grace is sufficient. And there's just certain things that God just definitely is not going to change his mind. But we serve a God that he yet don't, does not have to compromise who he is. He passed death, fell upon all men. And that which is crooked, who can make it straight? But yet without compromising who he is, for the wages of sin is, and the devil thought he had us. But God, before Adam even made the move, the lamb was slain. Before the foundation of the world. So there will be a resurrection. It's not something that we're making up so we can handle death. But I really believe, and the word of God is true, that one day, whether you believe it or not, you don't even have to be saved. You're going to rise. The question is, how will you rise? Because we know that Jesus is the only true living God. We do give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for every remark, everything that has been done thus far. We give honor uh, to the spirit of the Lord, to this great family. And the reason why I say great family is because the great sacrifice that this family has made. Amen. From the very beginning, it's not like uh, my children, my children had a chance to have time with their father before I became in this position, but you all started in sacrifice, and we thank God for your sacrifices. Amen. So we give the Lord. <laughs> and to all the bishops, Ella Hollis was saying, I'm out, I'm out rank, I'm out rank. And uh, I, I feel the same way uh, when it comes to all the colleagues that's on the pulpit. Um, I thank God for everyone that have come out to show your love for the family and your honor for the bishop. Amen. We praise God for you all. Amen. If you just give me a few minutes, I won't be before you long. Amen. And if I uh, refer to bishop as dad, uh, it's no disrespect. Uh, uh, that name, dad, uh, took place when I early in my ministry, and it's just a title that I gave him to always remind me that whatever you have received, you didn't come in with it. Amen. And don't ever forget where you got it from. And it's a, it's a title to, that I gave uh, Dad to, to remind myself. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you come into. Uh, you was just an empty blank sheet of paper. And God used dad to be the pen to write his words on my heart. Amen. So indeed, if I say dad, I will try to come back and say bishop. But uh, there's no disrespect. I have always called him dad in the ministry. Amen. So immediately to the word of the Lord. We do have something I want to share with you. In the book of Matthew, St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11. 
verse 7 through 9. St. Matthew chapter 11, verses 7 through 9. And I'll read it in your hearing. It says, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed? In soft raiment, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. And just for a space of time, I would like to use for a subject, what did we see? What did we see? The purpose of this question, this question is designed to provoke or stimulate a thought to be brought back in the forefront of our minds to consider a particular truth from the evaluation and reviewing of the character of John the Baptist, which we will parallel with our father, Bishop L. Stearns. When God asks a question, it's not because he lacks information. When God asks a question, he wants us to stop and realize what he's asking to bring in our minds a particular truth for our benefit that we may be better from it. Adam, where art thou? It's not because he was lost. But the question is, Adam, why are where you at? You never ran before from me. Why are you running now? Have you eaten from the tree that I told you not to eat? Anytime God asks a question, can these bones live? It's to bring your attention to so he can bring out a particular truth. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an a, a almond rod. Look again, Jeremiah, I'm asking again. What do you see? I see a pot facing toward the north. You see well. And from the north will judgment come. Anytime God says a question, it's because he's bringing to our minds something that he wants us to get an understand and enlightenment with. Here we have in this particular lesson, we have uh, Jesus concluding giving the commandments to his disciples. And at the end of them, he tells them, I want you to go and begin to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want you to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers, gave them powers to cast out demons and raise the dead. And the Bible says that he began to go into the cities and began to teach and begin to preach. And all of a sudden we find that as he is teaching and preaching, some disciples, not of his, but sent by John, amen, in front of the multitudes wanted to know a particular thing. And that is, listen, John is in prison, amen, and he just wants to know, are you the one or should we look for another? And I'm here to let you know that some may feel, and this is why Jesus is defending John's honor, because John is asking a question in which they remember John saying, behold, the Lamb of God which cometh to take away the sins of the world. They remember John, let him be made known that, amen, that he must increase and I must decrease. Amen. But even with that statement, when John made that statement, he didn't volunteer himself to go to prison. 
Amen. It's God's responsibility to do the decreasing. And it's God's responsibility to do the increasing. Even when it came to the Son of God. Amen. The Word made flesh. Amen. Jesus didn't do anything unless he heard it from his God. Amen. He didn't do anything except to God on the inside made known to him what to do. And even Mary says, Jesus, they're out of wine. He says, woman, what business is it with thee? It's not my time yet. Amen. God does the increasing. And God does the decreasing. And you find John now in a very dark position. You find John now in a position where, amen, dark days are arising. And, and it's not because, amen, he's just in such a doubt. Amen. But John needs some reassurance. Amen. He needs, amen, that once again mentality. I just need to hear it one more time. Amen. I just need to know something just one more time. Amen. And I don't know, amen, about you, but I'm here to let us all know that if Jesus needed a little strengthening to drink his cup, if Jesus had to pray to get into the will of God, see, the man had a will, amen, teaching us that, amen, that God's way is not always going to be a yes, Lord. That you're going to have to learn how to bring down your will into the will of God. Amen. And you're not going to, amen, you might say it the first time, but it sounds good, but the heart is not in my, amen, harmony with the, amen, what you're saying. Amen. But I'm so happy that Jesus didn't just stay there. He prayed again, and then he prayed again, and the Bible says, amen, and then the angels came and strengthened him. And I'm here to let you know that no, amen, servant is greater than his Lord. If Jesus is going to, amen, shows us that there's going to be times where you're going to need some strength, there's going to be some times you're going to need some encouragement. Amen. You ain't gonna, you're not going to be able to drink this cup by yourself. You're going to need some grace to help you drink the cup. John, at this time in dark times, you don't find Jesus visiting the prison. You don't find Jesus sending his disciples checking on the welfare of John. Amen. But John is in the prison. Amen. Because of his stand. And you find now John about to go off the scene. But before he go off the scene, he want to know. He would have to have that a little assurance. Amen. Are you the one or should we look for another. Uh, amen. And Jesus didn't give him a direct answer. Uh, he didn't say let amen, let John know I will come down there and visit him. He didn't say that. Uh, he didn't say amen, I want you to let him know that I'm the one. He didn't say that. Uh, he said I want you to go back again uh, and tell John the things in which you have seen and heard. Uh, amen. The same thing that he heard uh, and the same thing in which he has seen uh, caused him to send his disciples to ask that question uh, and he sends them back with the same answer <laughs> amen but I'm here to let you know when Jesus sends you that answer uh, amen you just have to hear it again sometimes uh, you can preach to other folks and encourage them uh, amen you can tell them it's going to be alright uh, but amen in your dark hours and though you have talked to others uh, sometimes you need somebody to tell you it's going to be alright We've, amen, encouraged many folks, amen, and let it be made known that God said he will never leave you nor forsake you, amen, and that's true, but sometimes you need to hear it again from somebody else, and I'm here to let you know that, amen, God knows the way we take, amen, and John was in a position just like Job, amen, Job says, I went and I sought the Lord, and I could not find him, I went to the left and couldn't find him. Him. Uh, I went to the right and I could not find him. Uh, he says, I looked to the north. I went ahead of me. He was not there. Uh, I went in the back and he was not there. Uh, but he says, but the Lord knows the way I take. Uh, and I'm so glad God knows the way we take. Uh, he knew that John needed a little encouragement. Uh, he knew where John was. Uh, and he knew who John was and what he needed. Uh, go back and let him know uh, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, he hath anointed me uh, to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh, take him back to Isaiah 61 and 1. Uh, if God said it, uh, amen, I'm it. Uh, all you got is the word of God. 
And the Bible says that when he departed, when the disciples left, amen, Jesus is about to give a eulogy about John that John didn't get the chance to hear. He waited till they, them to leave. Then Jesus began to eulogize John. He began to say what? went out what went ye out to the wilderness to see he didn't say who you went out he said what would you went out what means to emphasize the identity of the person and then I mean who means to identity the identity of the person but what means look at the character I want you to look at the nature of the person. Uh, I want you to understand uh, that amen put John the Baptist uh, had in his mind uh, all I need uh, amen is a conclusion. Uh, are you the one uh, or should we look for another? Uh, and Jesus made it known. Uh, go back. Uh, but then uh, he tells the multitude. Uh, I don't want you to think that John is a wavering man. Uh, I don't want you to think that he's oscillating. Uh, amen. John uh, is a stable man. Uh, John is a fixed man. Uh, he He's a man uh, that would tell it like it is. Uh, amen. John was one uh, that cried loud. Uh, he spared not. Uh, he lifted up his voice uh, like a trumpet. Uh, he showed Israel their transgression and their sins. Uh, he told the Sadducees uh, and the Pharisees. Uh, he didn't hold back uh, on their position. Uh, he says, you snakes. Uh, amen. Who warned you uh, of the, amen, the wrath to come? He held his ground in spite of the position <laughs> told the soldiers uh, who could have locked them up uh, amen what will you have us to do uh, amen I'll do no violence to no man uh, amen he didn't hold his tongue uh, amen he said be content with your wages uh, amen he told the IRS uh, take only that which is yours uh, amen he told amen uh, Herod the king the president uh, the woman that you have not your wife. Amen. He didn't really, amen. He wasn't a man huh, that oscillated with the wind. Huh. He wasn't worried about, huh, amen, the repercussion. Huh. He's steadfast. Huh. He was unmovable. Huh. He wasn't a wavery man in spite of public opinion. <laughs> so he, Jesus began to make it known to him. Huh. Before you let your mind go there, uh, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? Uh, amen. It doesn't matter uh, what your intentions may have been. Uh, you might have wanted to go into the wilderness uh, to hear the word of God. Uh, some of you may have went uh, out of curiosity. Uh, others trying to size up your competition. Uh, whatever the reason was, uh, you went out to see him. Uh, and when you went out to see him, uh, what did you see? Did you see a reed shaken with the wind? Was John wishy-washy? Was he going with the public opinion? Was he compromising God's word? Or did not he cry loud? Was he not firm? Was he not stern? Was he not fixed? Amen. And resolved in the word of God. Amen. And he says, amen. I want you to know. John, he was a burning and shining light. And you were willing to rejoice in his light. Not even always, but for a season. And I'm here to let us know. Amen. What did we go out to see? Amen. We went out to see a man who was not afraid to tell it like it is. He was not afraid of public opinion. He was a man that cried loud. He was a man that spared not. In spite of your ranks, in spite of public opinion, he knew that God had put flock in his hand and he had to tell it like it was. Yes, it's easy. But dad, amen, he came up in a time 
where the apostolic faith was hot and fervent. You can go to church to church and hear the same thing. But oh, when the father voice began to go low, there yet remained a voice crying in the wilderness. Amen. Holiness is right. Righteousness is right. But a difference between light and darkness. We saw a man who knew that all I have to do is just compromise. I'll fill the church up. Compromise. Now I have more friends. Compromise. But the same word that was committed in his hands, he, were, he was persuaded. He was, amen, he was convinced. He, had a, uh, uh, he was resolved and convicted that this word is right. And when the voices were strong, we were rejoice. We were willing to rejoice. Many preachers was behind this pulpit preaching the same thing, rejoicing in his life willingly before season. But yet remain a voice in spite of he yet cried loud. Follow peace and holiness with all men without which no man shall see the Lord. Come out from among them and be ye separate said the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I'll be a father unto you and you should be my sons and daughters he knew we couldn't be saved with a compromise Christ it takes something what did we see we saw a man that would come in was he afraid? Yes, he was afraid. But God was with him. God removed the fear. God let him see the importance it was to declare the word of God. I got some children out there. My sheep are out there. And they will hear your voice. He cried loud. With all respect to every position, he cried loud. He told it like it was. And then turn around and hug you. But you know he made it plain. The stand. A true man of God. Firm and fixed. Didn't oscillate with public opinion. Didn't change his message. Because the people didn't stand up or applaud. Didn't want the money. Left the offering. He wasn't coming to preach at congregation for the money. Heard him many times say, if you collect the offering, I'm not coming back. He was concerned about the light. The light. And I'm so glad that dad hailed. The light, the burning, shining light. As the forefathers went off the scene, the voices became faint. Christ became altered. And instead of being conforming to his image, they condescend him and try to make him to our image. And Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man can get to God except by me. And if you compromise it, you have compromised, you've lost the truth. You have tampered with Christ. You have tampered with the way to God. You've tampered with the light of God. And Bishop held the light because precious soul is at stake. We are a debtor to this light. Dad held this light, and we all rejoice. I said we all rejoice. 
I told some people, I said, you helped make me. And they looked at me and said, how's that? I said, when dad got over your pulpit and preached, you stood up and said, go ahead. And I was a young man listening to it, and all you did was validate what he said. We have not changed. Dad, holding the light. Because Jesus is coming. He's coming. Dad, work, his steadfast, has paid off. His work is done. It wasn't easy. I know it wasn't easy. I thank God I got a chance to see this life. And we are debtor to one another to maintain this life and not alter it, not change it, not compromise it. I'm going to leave it with this. I remember going over different relatives' house and the older aunties and grandmas, they would have shelves. And we call them whatnots. And you would, you would see maybe a pottery cat. And it's never two things that match. It'll be a pottery cat a little bell that says uh, 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 Michigan, then a church house, and then a Tussie Roll box. But mama knew where her stuff was. And you bet not touch it. And I remember going, because we didn't have a lot of toys, so a kid would go and grab and touch it. And when you go out of ignorance in front of grandma, she said, what you got in that in your hand? She said, go put that back where you got it from. Some of us have altered Jesus. Some of us have taken Jesus away from the progenitors Amen. Where they got it from and now they're doing their own thing. But God is saying to Bishop like, go back and put it where you got it from. You didn't get Jesus that way. You didn't get him that way. Put him back where you got him from. If he's the last apostolic father, then let him be with children. And the children is those who are holding the unadulterate word of God. God bless you all in Jesus' name. And as for the directors. Directors, if you will come at this time, and everyone remain seated, we have our honorable recessional.
picture I just remember what Jesus said and now I know who holds my tomorrow and I know who's got my hand I don't worry about tomorrow I'm just living from day to day I Steve. 